Hey everyone, it's Renderer, and uh, this is the trend I was talking about in the title. This is the reason you clicked the video. The trend I'm talking about is animated looping renders for e-commerce websites. So the reason I think you guys can make so much money off of this is because I've actually made a surprising amount of money off of it as well, and I just wanted to spread some sauce over here. Uh, there's a lot more brands that can benefit from this kind of work than probably even know about it. But basically, I think the reason why this trend is so accessible for so many people is that brand owners are going to be able to realize why this is so valuable very quickly. It kind of does the job of many product photos at once and it does it in a very futuristic and kind of dynamic way. Since the majority of the work here is basically just creating the model for the product, it's going to be very easy to not only sell them on the animations that you're going to use as the product videos, but also you can sell them on ad creatives, which I'll talk about more in a separate video, product renders, other product animations, and basically anything else you can do with the power of 3D rendering, which I'm sure you guys know is virtually infinite. And then yeah, so do they have multiple product variants, like uh, other like other colors or if it's a food product like flavors basically what I'm saying is from this project alone if you're able to close a client it is a lot more likely that you're gonna have a long-term deal than if it's with a lot of other types of projects so the process of making these renders is pretty straightforward although I highly recommend you guys watch till the end because there are some hurdles that you have to jump over that I'm gonna talk about in this video also if I sound a little weird and nasally I'm a little bit sick it's my first time leaving the house in a while uh, which also explains the reason why I'm outside filming this video. Anyways, yes, you literally just need to start by creating a model of the product. This isn't a modeling tutorial, so if you need help modeling, then go find someone else on YouTube. And then you can light it however you want. So people DM me on Instagram a lot asking for feedback about their product renders, and I think the majority of the time, the main issues I critique are the lighting. Even if you have really good materials and a really good model, your lighting is kind of what determines how real things look. So what I recommend to do for this is to go on like Pinterest or Google or something, say your product is like a like a supplement in a dropper bottle. I'll, I'm actually working on something like that, I'll put it on the screen. What I did to light this scene was literally just go online and search brown dropper bottle and I found one that I thought looked good and I basically just copied the lighting setup the best I could. This will save you a ton of time and uncertainty. So once you're satisfied with the model and the lighting, I would highly recommend you just render out one frame and put it in Photoshop. So if it's your client's website, you want to ask them, you know, what color is your product page? Is it going to change? Make them understand that you're going to kind of need the background of your renders to blend into the background of their website. So once you have that color established, drop it in the background of Photoshop, drop your one rendered frame in, and just make sure everything looks all good before you proceed. Once you have that all set, I would just go back into Blender and render all of your frames. I'd try to keep it under 90 frames and keep the dimensions under about 1200 by 1200. Your target should be keeping your final size under about three megabytes. This will allow things to load quickly on most devices and phones and browsers and all that. Once you're in your video editor of choice, I use Premiere just because it's kind of the industry standard. Set your background and you can go up to import and import all of your stills as a sequence. If they're PNGs, you'll see the background color that you set right there. So that will be perfect for the mobile breakpoint, and I'm going to talk about why very soon. For the desktop breakpoint of your client's website or your website or whoever you're doing it for, I would recommend using the WebM file type. You can actually get a little more creative with it. WebM is great for transparent backgrounds, and the file size is actually really small, so it's going to be smaller than your MP4. And because it's transparent, you can get a little more creative with what's behind it. You don't have to just rely on a solid background color like with the MP4. The main limitation of this, however, is Apple's iOS still doesn't support WebM for some reason, so if you try to load a WebM in Safari or Chrome or whatever on an iPhone, it's just not going to work. I've tried and it, nothing shows up and there's nothing you can do about it, so pretty disappointing. I would recommend Apple gets it together and, uh, and updates that for us pretty soon. Oh my god, guys, look. So yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. I'm gonna really try to get back into posting more often because I miss you guys and I wanna create more content for you. And I feel like lately I've been coming up with tons of ideas for videos and ways to spread some information to you. So as always, please drop a like if you enjoyed and drop a dislike if you hated it. Leave a comment, <laughs> leave a comment telling me why you hated it and actually don't do any of that because I have good intentions. Thank you for watching, see ya.